Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Gaming Today.com video, we're going to be discussing some benchmarks which have popped up for the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, thanks to an Alienware 51 system which Linus Tech Tips managed to grab for review. Now, these are only preview benchmarks, and therefore we don't have a great number of them, and from what I understand, BIOS revisions are a bit early as well, so it's probable that performance will increase a little bit, plus memory isn't as fast as what it could be for Threadripper, so you do have to bear that in mind as well. With that said, a number of you actually asked me to cover this, so I'm going to quickly do so in this video. So, first of all, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, you'll notice that performance in DirectX 12 is essentially identical, but DX11 was performance is slightly behind both the Z270 as well as the X299 uh, test bench. Now, just so you know, the Z270 is running a 7700K, whereas the uh, X370 is running an, an 1800X processor. No surprises there. DirectX 11 results, however, are going to be very interesting to see if this is a routine occurrence with Threadripper, and it's slightly pipping to the post, the X370, but essentially it's almost identical. If you're very closely looking at the screen, you'll also notice that the 68 frames per second, which is shared between the X299, the Z270, as well as Area 51, the bar is ever so slightly shorter on the Area 51. That's probably just how the slides were conducted. So there's probably a point variable. So, for example, on the X299 bench, it might have been like 68.9. And the other one, it might have been like 68.1 or something along those lines. We also have uh, Threadripper in 3D Mark. There are Firestrike Ultra, Time Spy, and Time Spy CPU results. Not exactly too far off of the X299 bench. Firestrike is basically identical. Time Spy is slightly behind, whereas the Time Spy CPU is actually quite a bit behind. You're looking at around 11,000 for the X299 versus almost 9,000 for the Threadripper. That's not too much more than what the X370, at least comparatively, uh, puts out. Okay, so this is the area where Area 51's Threadripper kicks a butt, and that is Cinebench R15. They score just under 2,900 Cinebench points. This is multi-threaded score, whereas the X299 scores 2,146. I find the results of the X299 actually quite interesting, as at uh, default clock speeds on the 7900X, we actually got 2350 points, but obviously there are different considerations like the RAM they're using, um, BIOS revisions and all that stuff, so it's possible that, you know, there's not too much of a difference in reality. Maybe if they did some retesting or whatever, their results would be a little bit higher, but no doubt about it. Can't take anything away from Threadripper. It is absolutely kicking the butt of, uh, of uh, Cinebench. However, some leak scores are a little bit higher than this, so that's quite interesting. And it's actually a couple of hundred points slower than what AMD have shown us before with the Robert Halleck demonstration uh, with the video known as Ryzen 3 and Threadripper product update. Finally, we have Blender. Uh, this one is Blender 2.78. We have a BMW and Classroom uh, rendering, and obviously this is time in minutes, so you can quite clearly see that, yes, it does, once again, kick the butt of the X299 platform about 40-ish mm, about seconds in the BMW test and a couple of minutes faster in the classroom test. Now, that doesn't sound like much, you know, in kind of uh, a very loose term. You think, oh, a couple of minutes when you're talking about, you know, 12 or 11 minutes. That's not a big deal. But yes, it is when you're dealing with very complex scenes. And of course, those render times, those times scale. So if you're basically unable to do much while you're waiting for something to render or export or whatever you're doing, so you can put that into a composition, then obviously those things really start mounting up throughout the day. And this is particularly true if you're running a small business, if perhaps you're a um, 3D artist, or even if you're doing video editing or something like that, because A, you have those additional processor cores where you can do something else in the meanwhile, or B, you could just say, okay, 
uh, I'm just going to go to get a coffee or, you know, I need to pee or whatever. And it should be pretty much done by the time I get back. And that's a lot better, obviously, than waiting for a slower system. Comparatively, if you were to see, uh, say, look at the Z270, which is taking over seven minutes, think of how much of an impact that would have over a day. So if you're doing a lot of these scenes or a lot of these tweaking, and obviously you've got the other the other aspect of this as well, it's just a lot smoother while you're all, well, you know, working on it. There's nothing more uh, infuriating than, for example, if you're running Adobe Premiere or you're doing 3D modeling or a Photoshop work and you're just like, oh my goodness, are you serious of the, uh, you know, as it kind of janks along and you're waiting for the, for the you know, the, the window to kind of export, or sorry, to update. And that was very infuriating back in the early 2000s when you were doing video editing or even image editing on very high resolution images. Um, you know, even doing like 4K back in like the 2000s uh, early 2000s if you didn't have a abundance of ram and all of this stuff it could be very infuriating so obviously that's one of the reasons that just a couple of minutes doesn't sound like much but it does scale up rather nicely to larger projects anywho um as i said these results are pretty insular and they're not an ideal test system uh, to linus's credit he did say that you know the area 51 system is not ideally configured apparently it was also hitting uh, very high temperatures as well. I would suggest, if you're interested in this, go and check out his video um, because he does bring up a couple of interesting points regarding this. Um, it's a bit of a shame that there's not more games. I would have loved him for test a wider suite of them, but it is what it is. We've got what we've got. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I know it's a bit short, but that's because I've been rushing to finish off the 7820X review, which is currently actually exporting as I speak. So I'm going to let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.